Hey there folks, John here with Through My Lens, and today we'll be taking a look at the Escaton from the Wii Knife Company. Uh, now this is a uh, this video is a video supplement to my written photo review that can be found on Through My Lens. Uh, the link to the written photo review will be found in the description box below. Highly recommend you take a look at it. It's going to have a lot of the technical details, a lot of great photography and close-ups of the knife. Uh, again, this video discussion is just meant, meant to be a supplement to that written photo review. So We Knives as a, as a knife company has come on really strong in the last year or so. Uh, has gotten a reputation for producing very, very high quality, uh, very l uh, low cost, relatively speaking, uh, knives. Uh, they, they do very high-end knives, great materials, uh, great workmanship, uh, but they keep the price reasonable relative to their competitors. Uh, throughout 2017, I really wanted to try to get one of their knives. I really wanted to check it out, see what the hype was about, uh, but most of the knife models that I saw had like got me about 95% there. I was just, it was almost one that I would want to buy. Uh, I kind of did take pause at the early models that had the proprietary screws, the proprietary hardware that required a separate tool. Uh, I do prefer torque, torque screws, I think most people do. So I got really excited when I heard uh, toward the latter half of 2017 that they were going to come out with a few models. Uh, and then I actually got the chance at SHOT Show last month to uh, visit with uh, the Wee Knife Company because they were at SHOT Show, and I got a chance to see this model, uh, the Escaton. Uh, it does come in uh, two different uh, variations. Uh, this one that's carbon fiber uh, with uh, an uncoated blade. Let's take a look at what the blade looks like now. And uh, the other model, uh, the carbon fiber uh, is replaced with uh, titanium that is uh, anodized blue. Uh, it looks really nice. It's a tad heavier than, than this model, which is just three ounces. Uh, this is crazy light. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Um, getting a chance to handle it, um, it really checked a lot of boxes for me uh, in terms of what I was looking for in a knife. And we'll kind of get to that in a minute. Uh, but uh, since this model has come out, uh, there's been a lot of discussion in the community. It's, it's been out for uh, somewhere between two and four weeks. Um, it is a limited edition model from Wii. And uh, a lot of people have been discussing because it is such a radical design what exactly is this knife designed to be? What is it meant to be? Uh, a lot of people are speculating that it is designed for we to really showcase their capabilities as a knife maker. This model was designed by Elijah Isham, who is a fairly new knife uh, knife maker, knife designer. Uh, and they really, again, a lot of people are speculating that we wanted to really showcase what they can do as a manufacturer, uh, because there's a lot, a lot of technical complexity to this knife. To be able to manufacture this knife in volume, uh, and I believe this one's a, a limited edition of about 500 pieces, but to, to be able to do hundreds of, of examples of this and do it in, in, in any way that can be uh, cost effective and, and price competitive uh, is a tremendous, tremendous achievement. Uh, if you look at the detail uh, that uh, that exists in this blade, not only the cutouts but uh, the fullers. Uh, same goes for uh, the the frame of the knife. Uh, it's a multi-piece design with uh, an integral uh, titanium uh, uh, rear piece here. Uh, the pocket clip is fantastic, and again, it does use torque screws. Uh, it is a liner lock, uh, as you can probably see here. Uh, but just the, the the capability to to manufacture, to produce and manufacture this knife uh, in a, any kind of a, a price point that makes sense for the marketplace is a huge achievement. Um, and and there, I think there's absolutely 100% uh, legitimacy to that in terms of why we did it. Uh, they're really trying to establish themselves in a pretty crowded uh, knife marketplace of, of high-end knives. Uh, and, you know, I, I definitely think there's, there's credence to that. Beyond that, 
you know, is this just an art knife that's designed to be pretty and it has no function? Some have, have made that argument, um, you know, and I, and I can, to, to an extent, I can see why, because, um, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, kind of the shape of this, this knife, I think it kind of has a recurve to it in addition to all the other kind of detail going on to it. Um, I don't know for sure, I haven't tried yet, but I think this one's kind of going to be a little bit of a challenge to sharpen. Uh, so to think that this is going to be, you know, a utility knife that you'll want to use uh, in, in kind of a utility setting uh, is, is probably, you know, not exactly going to be the best choice if, if that's what you're looking for. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about um, this knife from a defensive standpoint, and that's kind of where I come come in, uh, you know, where I land, is that, you know, in addition to all the other, you know, gee whiz cool, this is a limited edition, you know, is it purely a collector's piece? Well, no. Uh, I think it's a great EDC defensive knife. Uh, this, this knife, uh, this knife blade is a very, very good size. Uh, it's, I think, about 3.7, 3.8 inches in length. And, uh, you know, from the, the shape of the knife, uh, nice tip to it, lots of belly. Um, you could easily, uh, the, you know, the, let me say this, there's nothing about that knife shape that's a, that would make it ineffectual in a defensive capacity. And the fact that it is so light uh, makes it a knife that I can carry in dress pocket, uh, dress pants, uh, by just dropping it into my pe pants, as I typically do. I don't wear a knife uh, uh, on the pocket with a pocket clip because, you know, I don't want there to be any uh, question of whether or not I have a knife. Uh, I don't I don't want to, uh, you know, raise that question. So I keep it in the interior of my pocket and a heavier knife, uh, anytime I think you go much over five ounces, uh, a knife is is going to probably be less than than optimal to carry because of how it's going to sit and weigh down in, in the, the, the pocket of dress pants. This knife being just three ounces, you drop it in your pants, you do not know it's there. Um, beyond that, you can get an excellent purchase on this handle. Um, it, it sits in the hand very nicely. Uh, there's, there's no jimping, obviously, but I don't necessarily think you need it on this knife. Uh, to the extent that it, jimping is a necessity on any knife. Um, probably the only uh, knock that I would give this from an ergonomics perspective is uh, the, the kind of the teeth here on the uh, uh, on the liner uh, lock lever here uh, is a little sharp. You can kind of feel it a little bit uh, when you grip down, when you're holding it aggressively. And also you'll probably note that um, uh, right in this area here, it kind of comes, the end where it kind of curves up and down at the end comes down to kind of a point and you can kind of feel that, um, on your finger. Uh, I don't think it's going to cut you even under, you know, an extreme use situation, but, um, it's less than optimal. I will say that very, very minor consideration, but beyond that, there's nothing from an ergonomic standpoint that would make this knife uh, unsuitable for a defensive purpose. So for me, uh, a cool knife that I can carry that, you know, when I'm at my desk in my office and I just want to break out and I want to flip or I, I want to look at it because the knife is visually interesting. Uh, this knife certainly has a lot of visual interest to it. Um, we has gained a strong reputation for doing excellent actions on, the, on their knives and this one is no exception whatsoever. When I saw pictures of this knife, I was concerned about the small flipper tab. Um, once I used this knife, when I saw it at SHOT Show, those, those fears were greatly alleviated. It flips so easy. Um, also important for a defensive knife is that you want to be able to have different methods to get to, to be able to deploy the blade, and you can definitely do that here. Um, uh, with, the, with the various cutouts, you can kick that out, you can bring it out slowly. Um, makes it easy to get, get to at the left hand, right hand. Um, you can even uh, gravity deploy this. 
um, which, you know, again, could be handy. So uh, the action on this knife is just great. Uh, it really is excellent. Um, so I think it's a fantastic, fantastic knife uh, for EDC for defensive use. Uh, it's a little on the pricier side at about three hundred and fifty dollars. You know, most of the zero tolerance knives that I've been buying, and that's probably the lion's share of my uh, the knives that I have. Uh, in my quote-unquote collection. I don't have a large collection, but most of them tend to be zero tolerance knives. But, uh, uh, you know, here's here's the uh, zero tolerance uh, ZT0562CF. This is this is probably the heaviest knife that I will try to carry to the office. And, and uh, you know, I don't do it that often because it is so heavy. I think it's about 5.6 ounces, and that is just not pleasant. Um, this is the 0095. I have the limited edition Russian version as well as this uh, Sprint Run uh, version of the knife. Um, this one's a little bit lighter than the, the 0562 we just looked at, at 5.3 ounces. So it's a little more comfortable to carry. Um, it's it's slender, but still um, it's, uh, it's not optimal. At three ounces, this knife is a joy to carry. Uh, really like it. Um, one of my only other knocks or complaints, I guess, that I would have is uh, the the packaging here is a box uh, because it is a limited edition model, and it does come with you know a, a cleaning cloth and and the the certificate uh, that shows that it's a limited edition model, which you know kind of an nifty thing to to throw into the packaging, I guess. But one of the things that impressed me about their, the earlier Wii knife models that I saw is they came with zipper pouches. Uh, so I was kind of bummed that this one didn't come with a zipper pouch, that it came with a box that I'm going to throw in a drawer and you know never look at, as opposed to something that can come in handy when I travel, a zipper pouch. So a little bit of a bummer, again, minor thing, but... Uh, I strongly recommend uh, if you can get in on one of these uh, these models, and I, I almost want to buy a second one, the uh, the other version with the the blue titanium here, because uh, uh, I think uh, I'm not as crazy about the coated blade on the other version of the Escaton, but I almost want to buy it so that I can see what it looks like with this knife blade uh, in the other uh, knife, because I think that would look. Uh, actually better than it does with the coated blade that's that's on the, the blue handle model But those are my thoughts on the Escaton highly recommend it uh, It's it's nice to finally get my hands on a Wii knife uh, And to be able to see what it's like there's there's actually one or two other models uh, That have come out that I wouldn't mind getting a hold of uh, you know, I, tr I typically only buy a couple of knives every year as you can probably tell by the uh, by the relative and frequency uh, knife reviews that I do on my channel, but uh, this is definitely one that I decided was going to be a purchase for 2018, and I recommend that you do so as well. Again, uh, take a look at the written photo review that can be found on ThroughMyLens.org, link in the description box. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. God bless. We'll see you in the next one.